we grew 500 percent wow during the yeah. pandemic during the pandemic people just at home stinking stinking needed some but they, <laughs> but not only were they at home stinking <laughs> they were comfortable enough to try a natural deodorant did you get a call that your warehouse is on fire oh yeah three o'clock in the morning the worst time of the day you want to get a call of that magnitude i'm literally shaking on the inside but still on the outside and it was like God said, this is just part of your story. I am Chantel Powell, founder and CEO of Play Pits. This is Where Are You Now? with Black Girl Ventures. Welcome to the Way In series, Chantel Powell, founder of CEO and founder of Play Pits. How you doing? I'm blessed. You know, I um, people ask that question, and it's so hard for me to answer that. But at times, it's tough. But I say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Well, look, we're gonna get into it. Yeah. So, but let's rewind for a minute, okay? okay? Because you've been knowing me, and I, it's a, and I've been knowing you. I guess <laughs> as we were shooting in the gym, literally <laughs> trying to figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go back to 2018. Mm -hmm. You somehow hear about a pitch competition? Yes. Like what? Like where did you? Do you even remember? So no, I do remember. So Play Pits launched March 2018. And this was sometime during the summer. I feel like it was like July or something. And I was watching the news and on the news, they talked about this pitch competition and they were like, you know, if you are a woman founder, come down and da da da, here's the link. So me and my husband like see it and we're like, okay, we should go do this pitch competition. Didn't even know what a pitch competition was, but they said a, a woman founder. So I said, okay, I think that's me. So <laughs> let me go check this out. We get on the link and literally it expired. Like basically I was too late. So it was like the deadline has passed and I'm like, okay, but the application is still available. So I'm going to apply. And I applied and I was able to get it. But how about that for resilience though? Yeah. I right. Just, like, I just said, I'm still going. How many times we see things and we're like, oh, it's done. I can't. Right. You just applied anyway. So you come to this competition. I'm the host. So interestingly enough, like the first competition, I'm just the host. Yep. And it wasn't even my competition. Yep. And it was at like the convention center. And she comes, kills the pitch, number one. Like kills <laughs> it, right? And then, uh, but was that the one where you were like, hit me up yes, constantly? Absolutely. So, okay, so it's this pitch competition. I get an email saying, congratulations, you've been selected. And I'm like, oh shit <laughs> like what is a pitch competition what am I going to do so I think on the email it had your email information and I it possibly even had a phone number and I was like okay I have questions and I think I called you or I emailed you and said hey can you talk and I think you gave your number and I was like hi I'm Chantel I have this business and I was selected and literally I remember you were like okay and I was like and I don't know what all needs to be included in this pitch competition. And you were like, well, you need a pitch deck. And I was like, okay. And I had my pen and my paper. Like, you taught me so much. Okay, wait, pause right there, though. Yeah. Because on the other end, I'm thinking, ma'am, why <laughs> did you apply for a pitch competition yeah. and not know what a pitch competition <laughs> is? Like, but you'd be surprised how many people, when I am now thankful that we could be that sort of conduit in that space where people are like, I don't really know what this is, but I know that it's going to support me and I'm going to yeah. do it. But back then I was like, ma'am, in my head. But I was like, uh. no, but even in your tone, you were like, girl, what? <laughs> like, but you know what I think early on in this journey, I learned don't be ashamed of your ignorance. Right. Like I was completely ignorant to business. I was a I, I created this business because of my son's need and I had never had a business before. So literally everything I learned was on the fly. And so I was confident enough to be like, I don't know this. Like, what is this pitch competition? You you were like, lady, all right, so 
you need a deck. Oh, okay, so what needs to be on the deck? You were like, the problem, the solution, <laughs> who is your target market? And the whole time I'm taking notes, right? And so I take that conversation and I go online and I start building on Canva a deck. And then I started to think through these things because when I started Play Pits, it was like, you hear those business that started on a napkin, like business plan on a napkin. Like I didn't have a business plan or no, nobody's napkin. Right. So I just started it and knew that other people needed this product. And that's how you were able to help me think through those things and develop it. So by the time I got on the stage, I was able to kill it because I then had all the information. And I felt confident enough to do that. Now you killed it. And the pitch that was dope. I mean, now like, so tell us what, back up a second, tell us what Play Pits is. So Play Pits is an all natural deodorant that was created because my son at six years old after football practice smelled like a grown man. Listen, problem, solution. You told me that. You know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? Like literally that's why I created this product was because I was a mom in need and had a smelly kid and was like, he not going to be out here representing me like this, right? And so I wanted to give him something that would keep him fresh, but also that he could relate to and really felt like, oh, this was made for me. And so that's why Play Pits exists and that's how I created it. So after that, you go, you, I'm like, hey, you should come pitch at the Beat Black Girl Adventure Space Competition. You pitch at the Black Girl Adventure Space Competition, win that. Yeah. Now, what were you, was that your, like, in terms of second pitch competition at, in general? Yeah. Because that first one I hosted, that second one was Black Girl My Ventures. first two was with you. Uh, you were the first, like, you were one of the first people in business that confirmed that what I was doing that. <laughs> I love You that. were. Um, and it gave, every time, it just gave me that gas, right? And so I was able to really like had this passion that was bubbling, but I, I was ignorant. I didn't know, I didn't know how. And then I met you and you taught me that that deck, right? That pitch deck and how to pitch and what's what I need to think about. And then by the time I was on the stage, I needed that verification from the crowd and I needed that verification from judges. The first one was a judge, um, it was three judges, but yours, you know, you let the people vote. And I love that so much because so so often what I learned is you will go to these events or hear other people talk about their businesses and they're so sophisticated, like so sexy, so sophisticated. Like I'm in tech and I have AI that powers that like, and here it is, I'm like, hi, I'm just this mama that made some deodorant in my kitchen, right? And so I would feel like, does my pro is my product powerful enough to be on a stage with, tech and AI and all these hair products and everything. And so your stage was the first stage that stamped that for me. It was like, bam, you belong here. Bam, keep going. And so, yeah, it's it's been an incredible like first journey with that education, thanks to Black Girl Ventures. And so what people don't know is my mom actually became your accountant. So back in the day when I started Black Girl Ventures, I used to have professionals that I know, my mom was one of them, do consultations for our winners. Yeah. And she did a consultation for you. And I actually don't know how it turned from <laughs> just a consultation to her being your accountant for like, what, six months, a year? Yeah, over, I feel like it was over a year. No, it was, I fell in love with your mom. Like literally it was like, um, one thing I, I knew early on, business money is way different than your personal money. And I never, Commingled, right? I used to style on the side, so I had a I had a styling business, and I would organize closets and stuff, right? And I, when I would get the money, I would put it in a separate account, and I would never let it touch my money. Um, so I knew when I started selling play pits, I needed somebody to figure out, okay, like if I put all the money in this bank account, now we need to account for these expenses, and now we need to make sure that we're tracking things. And I didn't know anyone. And so when I had a conversation with your mom, not only was it her knowledge and experience, but it was her warmness. Like I felt like I was talking to family. Um, I felt like she really cared. And being a black woman who comes from nothing and you have to talk to somebody about money, you got to trust that person. You want to you want you want that warm and fuzzy feeling. And I think, you know, accountants typically don't have that warm and fuzzy uh, approach to money. And so 
I was so grateful to be able to work with your mom. She was like incredible. I'm team Stephanie every day of the week. (laughs) So where were you in numbers in 2018? And then we're going to talk about like the trajectory now. So 2018, you win these two pitch competitions. You made this in your home. You're selling what online? I'm selling on I'm selling only on playfist.com and I'm doing all types of pop-ups. Like my friend who had a salon, I would go to her her salon on Fridays and sell deodorant. I would go to events that are local to um PG and I would go to DC and go to conventions and different trade shows and stuff, but I always had to find the the lower price things because I sell eleven dollar deodorant. And so when you selling, you know, fifty dollar t shirts and, you know, um twenty five dollar shea butter, you can have larger booth for it because you're going to make that money back. But for me, I have to sell a hundred deodorants just to make a thousand dollars. And that was really hard to do back then because you have to convince people that natural deodorant works. And so, you know, it was, it was really hard in the beginning. People were telling us like, no, oh, I only wear Dove. No, that stuff don't work. Like I would get all types of no's um, in those early days. So that first year, I think we were around, um, I think we ended around 20,000 for the year and we launched in March. And so, yeah, till the end of the year. And now 20,000 is like, <laughs> that's what you pay to make it happen, right? Listen, You're like, right. listen, the bills are, are way bigger. Um, yeah, you know, and it's so crazy because as you grow, you you have to learn how to manage bigger budgets, right? Like a $20,000 inventory run look way different than a, two million or five million. So you have to make sure that you you learn as you go to be able to manage those those bigger invoices and POs. So what was the takeoff moment? You're selling, you know, at these trade shows or different like vending opportunities and there's power in vending. You really get to understand your customer. I tell people all the time, like I started out vending with my t-shirt business and that's how I really got to understand my customer mm-hmm. and how you get people to come to your table and that kind of thing. Yeah. So you're doing that. When or what moment did it hit a mark and you were like, okay, this is taking off? You know, I think it was our first time being featured in Essence. I think for me, that was like, whoa. And the sales and everything was supporting it. Like I tell the story that I started Play Piss. I really don't remember the exact number, but it's around like $3,500 max. I started the business. I launched Play Pits March and I never put another dollar of my money back into the business. Mm. I let Play Pits support Play Pits. So for every deodorant I sold, I was able to take that money and buy more, right? And I didn't pay myself for, I think your mother was someone who helped me convince me like, all right, Chantel, now it's time. You have to start paying yourself. Because I just wanted to kind of use the money that I was making to put back into the business because I knew I didn't have any, like, I didn't have an investor. I didn't have, you know, this big pot of gold to go to. So I wanted to see if the business could make its own money. And it did. And when we were featured, when we had sales to be able to support a growing business that was able to, like, scale up. And then we got into Essence. This was pre-pandemic. So really pre-pandemic, we started to, like, I started to really realize, like, oh, people are paying attention to us. Like, we were in essence. I was invited to Target to a um, Black History Month event in their headquarters in Minnesota. And, I mean, Minneapolis. And I um, I really started to witness, like, how people were gravitating to the product. I would say that was my, like, when I really saw a hit right before the pandemic. And then the pandemic just... It just took us, like, we grew 500%. Wow, during the yeah. pandemic. During the pandemic. People just at home stanking. Stanking. Needed some. But, they, <laughs> but not only were they at home stanking, <laughs> they were comfortable enough to try a natural deodorant. Because you at home, right? And so you're at home, you with your family. And if I go work out and I think, oh, well, I'm going to take a shower, right? Or, oh, I'm I'm with my kids or I'm with my, you know, my friends. Like, so I could I could try this new thing. And I feel like people really started trying this new thing and they realized like, oh, this, this work, this, this is it. 
And so I think that really played a part in us being able to not only grow 500%, but keep that growth within the, once the pandemic was, well, I don't know if the pandemic is over, but you know, 2022, when things changed for so many businesses, we were still able to retain those customers because they believed in the product. Yeah. And I would dare say they believed in the story. Yeah, They believed in you. They believed in the marketing, right? Because you have some products that take off and then people can't sustain the marketing yeah. or don't know to do that. I think like in your background, you come from the TV industry, the production industry. How much of that really uh, had an impact on you making decisions with play pits when it came to like what it visually need to look like, aesthetic, you say you style, you you know, you style. You... Yeah. Matter of fact, I didn't know you do closet stuff. So like I used the... to. I'm oh. retired now. Oh, okay. <laughs> See if I can pull her out of that. But the <laughs> but how much of that sort of visual aesthetic expertise has played a part in your decision making around the marketing, the packaging, things like that? It played it's, it has everything to do with that. Um, I think me just being a creative, I'm someone who loves to look at beautiful things. And so when I created Play Pits, the aim was to have something that a kid would look at and be and, and give them a different experience than what the other brands were giving them. I feel like early on, I realized that anything that was a kid product, it really, the genesis was, it was an adult product first and the company threw the kids a bone, right? And so when you see that, you see that in the marketing. Like, it's like, oh, here you go, kids. Like, it's very lackluster and kind of like passive. And I wanted to be like intent. I wanted a kid to look at it and be like, oh, this is made for me. And so um, I knew that I wanted bright colors. I knew I wanted, you know, a certain feel. And I let my kids be a part of that. But when when I think about the branding and the packaging, and how I, you know, tell the story has everything to do with my background in production and just me being someone who's like a visual creative. Oh, well, you did the opposite. So you took it from a kid product and you threw the adults a bone, which actually is interesting <laughs> because it's, you can speak to the kid inside of everyone, mm -hmm. right? But what was that pivot like? Was it strong? So like you go from, you know, starting a business at maybe 3,500 to maybe making 20,000 in, in a year, to now 500%, we're talking crossing a million dollar mark. Mm -hmm. And so in that case though, these pivots of saying like, I'm gonna introduce a new product. I'm gonna, when do you know to do that? When, for me is when the customers act. So initially 2018, when I met you, Playfist was intended to be a kid brand, period. Inspired by kids, adults were using it, parents were buying it for their kids, using it on themselves and then doubling back and saying, oh, I never gave it to my son or, I, oh, I never gave it to my daughter because I used it for myself and I love this. So now I need to buy two sugars or a sunshine and a sugar. And I was like, OK. And I paid attention to it, but I really was like, OK, them parents are just going to use the kids since. But people started asking, like, hey, do you have an adult product? Do you have an adult line? And I was like, no, I don't. Like, this is for the kids. Y'all got... It's all these other natural deodorants for adults. And I felt like that space was taken care of. You have big brands like Native and Schmitz and Tom's, right? So I'm like, the adults have a product. They have natural deodorant, but the kids didn't have anything. But the parents were speaking up and saying like, yeah, we have adult products, but we don't like it. It's not working as well as yours. And so for me, that was like, that was the pivot. And so because the people were asking for it, I partnered with another brand, Zen Najar. Uh, Nikki, I met her early in my process. Literally, Nikki, Nikki helped me with so much. And so um, we did a collab. And so we did a limited edition run of the adult product. And it sold out in like five days, I think. And we did, I mean, it was a good amount of inventory. And so for us to have small customer base, it was like, okay, that's exciting, five days. Okay, Merry Christmas, parents. Thank you. Back to sugar, sunshine, and happy. Maybe like 60 days after that point, I would get a DM, an email. People would see me in person. Like literally every day I would get, so wait, when is the adult product coming out? When is it coming back? Like when is it going to be full time? When, when, where can I buy it? And I was like, I, that was just temporary. And so then that's how I ended up creating it because the pe people were asking for it so much that, 
I was like, okay, let me give them what they wanted. And so I think for me, I've I've never been like, let me just create a product and force people to buy it. I've been, let me create a product for a problem that my customers are telling me I have. They, they're experiencing and let me sell it to them. So let's talk about life, how life is life and where you also, you know, right now you're number one deodorant brand in Target. Black owned. Black owned. Number one black owned, yeah. organic deodorant brand in Target. Wow. First of all, kudos to you. Thank you. Right, because from the woman who's calling me, being like, "How do I pitch? Girl, and what do I need to do?" This? And I'm on the line, like, "What is she talking about?" I only was sick of me. Why? Yeah, I, tell, I literally I said, on. "I said, I think she hates me, but <laughs> it's okay." And I remember when I met you, I was like, "Hi, how you doing?" I'm Chantel. You was like, "Oh, nice to meet you." And then by the time I pitched, it was like, uh, I felt like you was like, "Okay, well, at least she listened." <laughs> Right. Okay. At least my hard work was not in vain. At least she ain't calling to waste my time. For right. Nothing. Exactly. And so here you are now, just wow, like light years away from that. Like I said, number one black owned deodorant brand in Target, and you're killing it. And you're in over 300 Target yes. stores and about to go into, you about to go on some new, can you tell us if you can? Um, is it private or can you? I don't know when it's going to air. <laughs> We have some new things coming up. Okay, right. we'll just say that. Yeah, we'll just say that. Okay, cool. But also, you're a whole human, you know, with children, with a husband. Like, what? How has that been? And also, you had a, a fire. Yeah, your whole warehouse caught on fire because not from because of someone else doing something in their own warehouse beside yours. Yeah. So first, let's talk about family family support. How they have they had to be patient? Have they been patient? You know, you got you also people maybe may or may not know, but you also were kind of like in living in two places at one point. Yeah. So you like living in the DMV here, <laughs> yeah. then traveling down to Atlanta, then coming back, and then also doing like, what has that journey been like from a family standpoint? Um, it's been a lot to manage, but it's been an amazing journey because I have an amazing support system. Like my village is strong. Um, they support me in, in not just like what you need, but like giving me what I don't even know I need uh, and allowing me to be free in the sense of like, I came up with a this idea of a product that I had no experience in and to support a family member in doing something that they ain't never done before. And you have the, you have the, the, the belief and the confidence that they can, even though they don't even know how is, you know, my family, like literally they watch me do something I ain't never done before every day. And they cheer me on like, who does that? And so I'm grateful to be able to have, you know, a family that does that. And it's not even like, yes, it's my kids, my husband, it's my parents, it's my cousins, it's my aunts, you know, so it's my friends. It's it it the web is so wide of my support system because yes, this life has been <laughs> the last last few years have been very hard. Very hard. Okay, so you get a call. Did you get a call that your warehouse is on fire? Oh yeah, three o'clock in the morning. I got to call it three, the work, the, the worst time of the day you want to get a call of that magnitude. 3 a.m. frantic neighbor. Hi, Chantel. This is your neighbor at the warehouse. Your warehouse is on fire. And I'm like, have sleep, huh? Hello? Yeah, um, I'm looking at it on my security camera. I got the call. The warehouse is on fire. I'm headed there now. And I say, okay, thank you. And I just hang up. And my husband hears it just because he's next to me and he can hear like fire. And so I, we don't say nothing. We literally just get up, put on clothes, get in the car. I'm literally shaking on the inside, but still on the outside. And I remember being on 7585, right when you enter like Atlanta and you see the view. Atlanta, I went to school in Atlanta. Atlanta is a place of like, it's where I became a woman. It's like mm. where I grew up. And so I seen the city and it was like God said, 
This is just part of your story. And so that shaking that was happening on the inside just settled. And I was like, okay, copy that. And we pulled up and from the highway, I could see the smoke and I could see the flames. And we get there, it's four fire trucks. I can't get in the front. So we like, okay, they're like, you know, you can't come here. So we go to the back and I'm just trying to see, it's a unit with, I mean, it's a building, but it has like eight units in it. And so I'm just trying to see like, where's this fire? Where's it burning? We get to the back and it's my immediate neighbor right on my side. And I'm watching my firewall. I can see the firewall and I see the roof start to collapse and I see the fire blade. I mean, they couldn't even put the fire out. I go finally go talk to a fireman and I say, hey, you know, this is my unit. I wanted to see um, when when should we have an update? And he said, oh, probably we probably won't get this out until 1 p.m. It's four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, and then explosions started happening. Like, and I'm like, what the hell is that? But the unit, the lady, she was an iron welder. And so she had propane, gas, oh my oxygen. And so everything that was explosive completely when How much product did you lose? Oh, girl. <laughs> so much. So, okay. We had product in the warehouse and we were we had just packed orders. So I had about three to four hundred orders that was about to go out. I had um about probably approximately like five hundred units of every SKU, give or take. I had started preparing for Black Friday for the for so this was in September, and this was the first year that I was able to be ready for Black Friday. And I was so proud of myself. I had shea butters. I had everything. I lost all of that. Then we had just got 7,000 units of deodorant delivered. And the next day, like literally the next week, that, that I mean, it was between, like we had all this stuff coming in, and then the fire happened. So I lost, I lost hundreds. Of thousands. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, it was a six figure loss. And then my insurance company dropped me. What? It wasn't even my fault. That was, so let me tell you. So the fire happened in September. All right, we get through, you know, we get all the paperwork because now we're trying to file a claim. I didn't have enough insurance in the first place. So I tell every business owner get your business insurance, get your liability, make sure that your property damage is the value of your property inventory, everything. I did not do that. I went from having the same policy for when I was in my home. I I upgraded it when I got in the warehouse, but it was only liability, never like property damage because no, nobody ever tells you that, right? That's right? And so when you need to go to these events and they say, hey, do you have your, you know, your um certificate of insurance? They don't, they don't ask what's your property. Nobody ever cares. They only care about liability. And so that's what I focused on. And so when it all said and done, I didn't even get a fraction of like the money that I was able to claim. It didn't even, it didn't even, I mean, I got it wasn't even close. It wasn't even close. I don't even think it was 10%. So product gone. First of all, I, you know, just wow. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Um, I'm I'm super upset because you were just about to launch the sprays. Yep. I just <laughs> saw you maybe uh maybe a month yep. before that and you were talking about the sprays. Yep. You gave me some. I literally I think I'm just reserving it. I got like a li- I got like at home I got like a little bit in a bar in an oh my oh my dresser. I won't use it because I feel like I'm never going to get it again. <laughs> And I've been saying to you, like, where do you go lots this spray again? Because it is fantastic and it smells so good and it stays so long and I love it. And like I still have a little bottle. I have I have a regular size bottle on my dresser with like this much in it because That's I'm just hilarious. like, I don't know when I'm gonna get it again. So I've been trying to get her for the record. I will put this on record. Put it on record. You have that I've been trying to get her <laughs> to do this spray because it's so good. But then what do you do? Like so, okay, so Eric, so you still got you got you got to meet the target POs. You got to get these three four hundred target uh, orders every week, every Sunday, like clockwork. Fire happens, <laughs> clockwork. They don't care about that. 
And so this this part of the journey was when I figured out, like, I had always, I'm, I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, right? And so I learned during that process excuses. Like, nobody cares about your excuses, right? Excuses build monuments of nothingness. Like, no, but... I saw it in in real life when it came to now I'm a business owner. Now I have customers. Now I have a target as a client. Now I have so I have employees. I mean, nobody cares about my excuses of, oh, I had a fire. What was me? Like, nah, you have to get up. You gotta figure it out. And I didn't know, like, what do you do? I was asking myself that every day. Like only what do people were reaching out like how can I help like let me know if you need anything literally I to this day I still I still don't even know what I needed at that time but every day I would wake up and say all right God I'm gonna put one foot in front of the other so the fire happened September 13th somehow divinely on August 24th I met a woman who had a fulfillment center and someone, um, Nicole Kane, she had told me that she was a great person. She was doing fulfillment with her. She just wanted me to meet her. I said, okay, I'll meet her. I said, let's set up a meeting. I'll come. But, you know, we had our own warehouse. We did our own fulfillment. And so the meeting was scheduled for September 14th. So September 13th, the warehouse burned down. September 14th at 9 a.m., I had a meeting with a fulfillment center on wow. my calendar. And so I got up and I went to that meeting and I think it was at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And so we're standing there, we we go on a tour, we are talking to her and so we're concluding the meeting and she looks at me and she says, oh, where, I know you said you were based here in Atlanta, where's your warehouse? And I said, well, my warehouse was on Fulton Industrial but it burnt down yesterday. And she was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it, um, you know, I had a fire yesterday. And she was like, how are you standing here in front of me? I would be like in fetal position in the bed. And I was like, I ain't had nowhere else to go. What else would I, what else was I going to do today? Like, where else should I be? I had, I ain't got no home for my business no more. So I had to get up and figure it out. And you was like, this was on purpose. And so, you know, every day I just got up. And and I think God just told me what to do, but I didn't know what I was. I literally didn't talk about ignorance. I had no idea. So you get through that, recover the product, you know, from working in everybody's homes and, and working with this fulfillment center. Yeah. You work to get everything back going. You get everything out. And now you're like rocking and rolling again. And then recently your mom passed. Yep. I lose my mom. So it was. My my warehouse burned down September 13th, 2022. My mom passed away September 22nd, 2023. I couldn't even celebrate one year of the fire because I was dealing with her being in ICU. So it was that, like, rock my core. That rock my core. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been, but one thing I know, I know that God, used the fire before the fire I had lost my cousin who was like my brother he used all these things to make me stronger to be able to deal with the loss of my mother losing a mother is like losing literally a part of you and so I needed that that strength I needed that like faith like that talk about must see faith faith like that faith you can't even see the the believing in the blessing that you you don't even imagine that it could be possible, but you just crazy enough to know it's possible. And that's what all this has kind of did for me. It just made me stronger. So this takes me back to the beginning of, of the interview where I said, how are you? How are we? Yeah, look, <laughs> that's the question. Yeah. Like, number one, theater and brand, you're killing it on the business front. Family rocking and rolling, yeah. you know, experiencing some loss, but you, the person, you know, you go from, you know, maybe thousandaire to, to millionaire, you know, how are you? And what do you, what does that question mean when you hear, how are you? Because this is where are you now? And it was yeah. just one question, which is, 
Well, that's the interesting way to say, how are you? How about that? I'm going to give you a dip. Where are you now? I'm actively finding peace. I'm, I'm present. I'm more present than ever. Um, I think when you experience loss, you learn that like, dang, I should have, I should have did this or I should have, you know, taken this in more. I should have. And now I'm like, I'm here. Like when I was sitting here, you saw I was looking around. I'm like, I'm taking everything in because I've learned that so often I was so focused on the destination. Like, I want to get over there. Like, I got to get here. And I've always been a to-do list driven girl. Like I was always the person with a, a goal in the steps to get to that goal. And now I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy those steps. I'm trying to take those steps and and cherish those steps because when I get to the destination, it's always going to be another destination. I spend more time in the on the journey to the goal than I do at the goal. And so now I'm I'm trying to enjoy all the small things, all the big things and and finding that peace and 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 being grateful for everything that I have. I'm I'm super grateful. I don't take any of this for granted. I walk in you know, I walk in warehouses and see thousands of play pits units. I used to make that by hand. And so I walk in and I see that and I look at things just so differently. And so, yeah, just actively finding peace. Well, I'm excited to have seen your journey. I'm excited to have seen how Black Revengers have been a part of it. And just to be as an individual, just along for the ride, like call me anytime. Hey girl, how do I, uh, you know what I mean? Like really appreciate yeah. that. So you got some, you got some stuff to show me. I got a sneak okay. peek for you. Okay. Ooh, I like right, a sneak peek. So this peek. is literally exclusive because no one exclusive? has seen this. Okay. And I, love I hope it. it comes out after it really comes out. But <laughs> so we did a Play Pits rebrand, a, a, a refresh, if you will. I wanted to elevate the Play Pits experience. In addition to our product over the over the years, because we don't have preservatives in it, our customers have complained of grittiness, right? It has a grit because the product is, um, due to it not having a, a preservative, it's hard to keep that same texture throughout. Well, I've been able to improve that process, and now we have a smoother, better, more amazing product, but it's the same formula. And so I didn't have to add a preservative. I just had to find an expert that could help me. And I was able to find that. Okay. So I went I'm excited. To, to the new play pits, okay? So this is happy. Okay. So I love it. Okay. This is sunshine. Okay, this is the new branding. Okay. This is sugar. Oh. I'm at this for my door empty, by the way. <laughs> so we also updated the oh, adult oh, sales. That is key. Nice. Okay, I like it. And, and I'm blind domino. Queen. Okay, let me move this a little bit so I don't hate it. Okay, awesome. And then we also have customers who talk about a baking soda issue. Okay. Having an irritation to baking soda. Due to pH balance, sometimes your body will um, become irritated to baking soda. And so I created a baking soda free formula. It's taken me three years to formulate because it's been a lot of pressure to be able to formulate something that works as well as play pits, but still not have baking soda in it. Right. Okay. And so this is love. Oh, uh, I love the, I love the, like, a little heart. I don't know which camera I'm trying to take. <laughs> But I love the the little heart. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so that's representative of me and Cameron's hands. And that's oh, I love to our oh, customers. Oh, because there's a the little hand in the big yeah. hand. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Okay. I love that. So that's my love to the customer. And then we wanted to get- Am I getting sprays? Okay, ma'am. You, you, you might be the getting a spray. The anticipation is killing me. You might be getting a spray. So <laughs> in addition to rebranding and refreshing our product, we are, I've also developed a, a body line for our top selling SKU. And that is, I tell people, queen is king at Play Pits, okay? <laughs> so we have a new queen body care line. So we have, mm. that is a gentle exfoliating body wash. Okay. So we got body wash, okay. Body wash. And then we have a whipped, ultra whipped body cream. I am loving the branding. Thank it's you. so regal. Like this. 
the purple play with it. So regal. Thank I love that. You. And then we have the spray. Okay, this is what I'm So this for. is the queen spray Break that spray. we're okay. coming out with. So we've upgraded the queen spray. So not only will it make you smell amazing, but it also so deodorize. So when you think about, you know, you put play pits under your arms, people put it under their breasts, but literally you can put this all over your body and your whole body will stay fresh. And you don't have to worry about rubbing it anywhere. You just, you know, spray your spray. hot spats. <laughs> I love that. And then we also have the deodorant. And this will be a oh, limit. This will be so like a, gonna, a, a collection a that you can collection. only get on playpits.com. Okay. Yeah. You know Target going to be coming for it. Are you going to try to go into a high-end like Macy's or one of those? Maybe. You know, like a beauty partner, like a Sephora. Or okay. Kind of, like, I can see it at a Sephora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or all day. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Sure. I love... So, when are we looking for this? So, this is all happening like February, March. Okay. And this is happening hopefully the end of March. Definitely by Mother's Day. Oh, the, uh, Mother's Day is a good day to roll it out. Yeah. Because it's queen. Yeah. Yeah. Are you excited? I'm so excited. I I've love been that. this has been my therapy, you know, in addition mm. to going to therapy and talking to a therapist every week, this has been um my therapy. I've dedicated this whole line to my mom oh. and all the queens in my life who supported this journey. So people like you, this queen line is made for you. It is made because of you. Um, and then all my amazing customers deserve a better, higher, more amazing experience to play fits. So I think Queen should definitely have a Mother's Day rollout with the whole mother story. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing with me. No problem. Well, congratulations. I can't wait for these products to come out so I can use all of them. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having On the Way In series. And your story is incredible. And I can't wait to see what you do next. I can't, I can't wait for you to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs>